Hello crafty friends, welcome to another 6x6 paper pad video. Today we're going to make two clean and simple cards using the same design, similar tools but different paper pads. If you want to know all about the paper pads I'm using, do go back to the start of the series. I'll leave a link in the video description. First things first, we're going to work on our card blanks. My idea is to have a strip of embossed paper on the right hand side of each card. So I'll do the embossing on those in a minute. But I do want to stamp my sentiment in the right place at this stage, just in case it all goes horribly wrong at the end and I make a mess. So this is going to go here like this. So I want my sentiment, I think, about there. And that's going to go there which means I'm going to put this larger sentiment here. I am using my stamp positioner for this because I'm using silicone stamps, which don't always stamp brilliantly the first time with these Catherine Pooler inks. It's just the nature of silicone stamps and water-based inks. And using a stamp positioner like this just means I can repeat the stamping over and over again until it looks how I want it to look. I'm not pressing very hard because this is quite a squishy stamp as well. And if I press really hard on it, it's gonna splurge everywhere. So I think I'm happy with that. And now for this big chunky hello, and I'm using this set square to get it lined up straight. The letters are all caps, so they all finish in exactly the same place. And the set square will just help me to keep everything level. I can't remember if I said, but the blue that I was using, the Catherine Pooler blue for the other card was It's a Boy. This one is Sandcastle. Again, I'm not pressing hard because I don't want to splurge. I'm just doing little repeat stamps until I get what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to emboss my strips. This one has words all to do with love on them. And this one has cogs. And to emboss these, I just run them through my cuttle bag with the embossing sandwich. or the embossing folder sandwich, I should say. So those have come out nicely textured and to bevel the edges to make them look a bit more finished where the panel was cut, I'll just use my embossing tool. And this one is gonna go on here like this. The bit of paper's a little bit too long for my card, but that's okay. I can trim that down in a tick. And I use my guillotine to trim the overhang. You could just use scissors if you prefer. So the first thing I'm going to do with the pattern papers, these ones in particular, is die cut some stitched circles from them. I've just cut a small amount, joined them on the back with a bit of spare washi, and I'm going to cover this strip in contact paper. You can use clear packing tape because I want my circles to be glossy. And this is one way of adding gloss to your die cuts. Next, I'm going to position my circle where I want to cut it, hold it in place with some washi again and run it through my mini Gemini. Because I'm cutting through paper and plastic, I'm going to give it two cardboard shims. That's just one piece folded in half. And I'm going to go through twice. So that's that set done. Now I'm going to do the pastel set. And instead of a circle die, I'm going to use a one inch circle punch. I haven't put contact paper on these because I'm going to put the gloss on after I've stuck them to my card. And I haven't used five different papers. I thought I'd have a bit of a pattern. So I've got two the same, two the same, then this star of the show in the middle. With this one, I'm going to go dark, light, dark, light, dark. Again, a bit of a pattern. Now 
so I had to stop talking because an enormous helicopter just flew over and it got really noisy. But all I've done is stuck these circles down in a line. I put the top and the bottom ones down first, then the middle ones, and then the two green ones on the top of those. And I'm just thinking possibly of having a simple gold heart there. So we've got a bit of a focal circle. This is a very flat card apart from the embossing. I haven't put the circles up on any foam tape or layered them at all but you could certainly do that if you wanted to create some dimension. You could maybe pop two of the circles up or put this one front and center and pop that one up. Again I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the top and the bottom one down because that will help me line everything up make sure all the gaps look right and then the middle one I'm not pressing these down firmly at the moment just in case I want to move them And I'm thinking to add a bit of bling, I'll add some smaller hearts in gold glitter. I think they'll work nicely. They work with the size of the pattern that's already on the circles. And the gold glitter is almost a kind of pastel gold, I guess you could call it. The circles have a kind of centralised pattern, so these sit well within that and now for the gloss so for these i'm going to use crystal glaze and i'm going to flood each of these circles with crystal glaze put a big blob towards the middle and then coax it towards the edge with the nozzle not squeezing any more out just using what i've squirted on there and this should, well, it will take a, a while to dry, but it will dry clear. So everything should still be the same colour. You'll be able to see the glitter from the heart and the pattern from the paper. But it will also have a bit of a domed effect. So I'll have a nice bit of dimension to it. This will take a long time to dry, so I'm going to put it somewhere safe where I'm not going to accidentally stick my fingers in it. If you get any bubbles while you're squirting this on, you can get a sharp implement such as tweezers or a pin and just pop the bubbles. You want to do that before it's had a chance, chance to start setting and then the bubbles will just disappear and there'll be no marks left from the sharp object oh goodness me i cannot speak today i'm all tongue-tied there will be no marks from the sharp object if you're not sure whether or not you've managed to cover the whole of your circles just pick it up and tilt it around and look at the edges and if you haven't you can just use sharp object again there's something there i'm just going to get out before it starts to set you can use a cocktail stick or you can get the nozzle of the bottle again or something just to nudge the glaze where you want it to go so there you go two more cards made with our six by six paper pads don't worry if you haven't got the same pads as me you can use whatever papers you've got already in your stash right thanks for watching i'll see you very soon bye for now